Hey team, hope you're all doing well. I want to go over this topic, which is extremely important for uh, anaerobic performance as well as aerobic performance. A lot of runners do not know about ferritin and the role of iron and ferritin on athletic performance. So what is a good ferritin level for runners? This is a, a, a very common question, but a lot of athletes don't necessarily always know what ferritin does. And if you're running low on ferritin, which is a component of iron, it doesn't matter how much motivation you have, you are not going to perform at a high level because it plays a major role in oxygen transport throughout the body. Back in 2007, uh, I was being coached by Lisa Rainsberger, who's the 1985 Boston Marathon champion. And I had never in my high school career, even in my collegiate career, being coached by Jack Hazen, who's one of the world's top distance running coaches, even he had not ever suggested getting a blood test. This is one of the major ways of finding out if you're running low on ferritin. Now, normal ferritin levels uh, for females is anywhere from 12 to 300 nanograms per milliliter. You are going to definitely feel it. You're going to feel fatigued. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel frustrated that you're not hitting those splits uh, that you're that you're aiming for on the track or on the roads. Uh, for men, it's anywhere from 30 to 300 nanograms per milliliter is the uh, area where you really want to focus on maintaining your your ferritin levels at. Back in 2007, I was tested and my my ferritin levels were at 21 nanograms per milliliter so I was well below very borderline anemic uh, when I was tested and I definitely felt it I didn't know what was going on all Lisa mentioned was you know you're you're definitely capable of running much faster in your workouts and in your races but for some reason we were just and this obviously was the reason I was running very low on ferritin and I think this is one of the most important topics that I probably have ever made on this channel since I started making videos in uh, December of 2019. I wish I would have started this this uh, YouTube channel back in 2011 when I started Run Dream Achieve. This is definitely very important because a lot of athletes out there, you may be one of them, that get frustrated that they're not hitting the splits or not running the types of times that they're aiming, that they're training for. And a lot of times we second guess ourselves. We start questioning our capabilities. We, st we start wondering, well, am I getting too old? Am I past my prime? Is this event that I'm focusing on maybe not my best event? That could be, you know, you could be training for the 5K when your best event really is maybe the 10 mile or the, or the half marathon or marathon. But if you're not performing at a level that you're, that you're dreaming about and you're, and you're feeling like you're chronically fatigued, you know, obviously the best rest, rest is definitely one of the very best ways of, of recuperating, rejuvenating yourself, uh, and, and maintaining your motivation levels. But if you're running low on iron, one of the best things you can do, and again, always consult with a medical professional. I have an extensive background in exercise physiology, have a, a bachelor's and master's in this, in sports science. Uh, but that being said, I'm not a physician or a nurse or a physician assistant, so I'll always consult those. But I'll speak from my own background. Um, what I was doing, what I did to elevate my ferritin levels back up to uh, around 85, uh, down from a, a low of 21, was taking a 65 milligram uh, tablet, a 65 milligram iron tablet, every other day. And I did that for about three months to get it back from 21 up to 85. When I got up to 80s, up in the, above 80s, I was really running very strong. I started setting personal best. I uh, started really feeling a major difference in my workouts and in my races. And what you want to do is you want to take that 65 milligram iron tablet with some orange juice because orange juice, uh, the vitamin C in orange juice will help the body absorb uh, iron and it's and without that it's very difficult for the body to absorb iron into the body obviously you can get iron through diet but some of the things uh, you want to keep in mind is low ferritin will impair oxidative enzymes and respiratory proteins in the body so that's going to reduce your your ability to use oxygen efficiently in addition it, it also plays a major role in inflammation so you know, as we're working out, we're doing these hard workouts, track workouts, road workouts, inflammation that's created from those anaerobic workouts we're doing, that reduces iron absorption in the body. In addition, it affects the ability for 
your body's ability to mobilize iron to form red, new red blood cells. So if you're running low on that, that's a, a, again a major problem uh, that will affect your overall athletic performance. In addition, it also affects the mitochondria in the cell. So you're, if you're running low on ferritin, so it's also going to affect what uh, ATP in the body. It's also called an, an adenosine triphosphate. So it's also going to contribute to localized muscle fatigue as well as increasing your body's lactic acid buildup. So it's very critical that you pay attention to at least monitoring monitoring your, your diet in terms of your, your nutrition, focusing on nutrition, getting plenty of iron uh, rich foods in your body each week, making sure you're hydrating well before, during, and after your workouts. Remember, when you sweat, also through uh, menstruation in women, you're losing iron in that in that respect as well, okay? Every, as well as foot strike hemolysis. So every time your foot strikes the ground as a distance runner, middle distance runner, sprinter, you're bursting red blood cells on the bottom of your, of your feet as well. So that's foot strike hemolysis. So again, we don't always as athletes pay attention to our ferritin levels and iron levels. Okay, again, ferritin is a component of iron. Uh, it, again, if you're running low on that, it doesn't matter how much motivation you have, you're really gonna have a hard time performing at a level that you've really been focusing on training at and, and racing at. And it's very, what's the good news is, you can definitely find out, the best way to find out what your ferritin levels are is to get a blood test, okay? And, and make sure you find out your hemoglobin levels, your ferritin and iron levels in your blood. Uh, just mention that to the nurse or the physician assistant or doctor, whoever you're talking with. So I really wanted to make this video on just you know reminding you as athletes, as a middle distance runner or long distance runner, if you're having problems uh, with fatigue, if you're having problems sustaining pace, and you're wondering if it's something that you're doing wrong, it's not something you're doing wrong. It's just the fact that you're probably more than likely it could be the you could be overtrained, you could need some time away from the sport, but it could also be that you're running low on ferritin. So I hope this video is helpful to all of you that are trying to get to the next level in your racing. This is something I did not know in high school or college. I wish I would have known. More than likely, I was borderline anemic or anemic all through high school and college and was still trying uh, to run fast times, faster times than I had run. And more than likely, I was just running on fatigued legs at the entire, the entire time I was in high school and college. So I really hope this video is helpful for all of you. Uh, to start thinking about this different aspect of your preparation. Feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think about this topic, about ferritin, iron. Have you had any problems yourself uh, as a middle to long distance runner? And also, uh, if you definitely check out the resources below all of my videos, they're there to help take you to the next level. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I make a new video, you'll be notified of it. Uh, definitely, if you leave a comment, I will definitely respond back to you. Feel free to share and like this video. I really appreciate that. Helps the YouTube algorithm, helps other athletes around the world to see these videos. And I wish you all the best in your training and racing, and I will talk to you all in the next video.